is Subscript going to be the next graph? With its upcoming sale on CoinList, everybody's favorite launch pad, let's get right down into the nitty gritty and look at the valuations. Okay, so let's look at the graph, which is Subsquid's main competitor. The graph is currently ranked number 50, which is fantastic for the project. It has a market cap of 1.7 billion, as you can see here. And what's very interesting is it's got a fully diluted value of 1.9 billion. That means the market cap and the fully diluted value are quite close together, which means that the circulating supply and also the max supply are quite close together so basically that means all of the tokens or pretty much 90 percent let's say all of the tokens of the graph are already in circulating and that means that we won't have any supply shocks due to due to vesting or early investors dumping their tokens onto the market if you don't understand the significance of that i really really suggest you try and you try and understand the differences between vesting schedules fdvs and tokens because this is going to be a key thing on your Web3 journey. So now if we look at Subsquid, we can see that it's got a fully diluted value of 125 million at current prices at what the token will be 9 cent, 9.4 cent here, as you can see. Now, bear in mind, this isn't on any markets at this point in time, so it's very important to see how much tokens get released. But I'll do the vesting schedule at the end of the video. So the difference here is basically between 1.9 billion and 125 million, which is about 13 and a half, 14 and a half times difference. So do you think the graph is worth 14 times more than Subsquid? Yes or no? Or do you think it's Subsquid's worth 14 times less? That's like one of your first metrics that you have to try and figure out and answer for yourself. Here we can see Covalent, which operates in the same space as the graph and Subsquid. Um, interestingly enough, we can see the market cap is 170 million, which is 45 million more than the fully diluted value of Subsquid. Um, we can see the fully diluted value is 272 million and like the circulating supply we're probably about 62% of the way there for covalent so then again the question I have to ask you do you think subsquid is worth half of what covalent is well I've talked a lot about tokens and FDVs and value but what actually is Subsquid? Well, according to them, it's not just another blockchain data querying tool. It's an innovative approach to data accessibility in Web3. Its architecture addresses the challenges of scaling, storage, and retrieval of data across various blockchains. So imagine a network that grows infinitely as new no nodes join. But why is this important? Well, I'll let them answer that. Thank you. Next question is for Dima um, from Arisa Putra 17. Could, could you please elaborate on Subsquid's tech and the unique features that set it apart from competitors? So first of all, I would like to start from like the problem, not from the tech that it's solving. So why it is actually hard? Well, it is hard because right now there is like a shit ton of data that blockchain produces ethereum binance polygon arbitrum they're producing data with each and every block and uh currently i estimate the total the total data to be like tens of terabytes and this is already quite a lot but then you have like thousands of applications that need to query this data and uh, each of those implications need only a very specific set of this data so not only you have to store this terabytes of data but you actually want to be able to very efficiently retrieve big chunks of this data specific to each specific uh, application so if you multiply these numbers you will easily get like petabytes of traffic which is really something uh, that is very hard to maintain if you have like a traditional infrastructure for this. So what we do, and uh, this is indeed a very unique solution on the market, is that we get this data, we split it into small chunks, we rehash it, and then we spread it out evenly across all the network. Uh, and everyone can join this network and hold a small piece of this data. And thanks to our uh, infrastructure and the tech that we introduced with Subsquid, um, when someone wants to query a specific chunk of this data, uh, it can find the right node and ask exact, 
basically this node about the data you're interested in. And the beauty of this is that you don't really need to have any centralized part to discover because uh, everything works in what is called a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, meaning that you basically listen to the whole network and you just say what kind of data they have and what network node actually has the data you're interested in and you know like who to pick from the crowd. And uh, this, I believe, the biggest node of subsquid because we actually do have this data and we know how to efficiently store it and efficiently query it. And on top of this, we build the whole ecosystem of tooling, which is Squid SDK, Aquarium hosted service, and also we plan to integrate it with a bunch of tooling that are popular. Uh, still, you can have some indexing solutions and our competitors try to build it, but no one actually is even close to be able to handle this massive amount of information and query it efficiently. And this is our secret sauce that enables us to be very performant at indexing, uh, provide free data, free access to this, because actually it is very cheap thanks to our solution. So you can kind of think of Subsquid as like an ever expanding library with an open door policy where the volume of knowledge or data grows and becomes more accessible as more contributors or nodes join. It's architecture where raw data is uploaded and distributed among the network nodes echoes the decentralized ethos of blockchain that Satoshi really brought to the fore. By enabling efficient local querying of data with tools like DuckDB and on-chain smart contract submissions, Subsquid could revolutionize how we access and verify the ever-increasing amount of blockchain data. When looking to do due diligence on a team, you just want to essentially look on LinkedIn first because it's the easiest place to go. We can see that they're based out of Zug in Switzerland, which many, many, many companies are. And we've got, they've got 11 to 50 employees. If we go a little bit further, we can find that Dimitri is the co-founder of Subsquid. Previously, he worked on Hydra, which is again a Web3 company. And then he was chief scientist at Helix Cognitive Computing. And he also has a PhD in maths. So then if we know that he's got a PhD in maths, we can have a little look through Google. Obviously, I Googled him first thing you do. We have two or three other pictures, so he's obviously a real person. And then I can go into his Google Scholar, which is rare because not many people have like um, academic articles that they've been cited on. So we can see this is probably for his mathematical career. Then you go a bit further and you do a little bit of digging and then you find that he also has a Twitter. So, you know, he's um, reasonably active, like, um, you know, commenting there on the SEC's fuck up, like, wow, yeah, well, well, what a day in crypto, you know yourself. Um, Dimitri also has a Crunchbase profile. So, you know, looks legit, has a PhD, has worked in the Web3 space for a while, seems um, pretty uh, legit. Next is um, Marcel, who's another core core. Uh, co Marcel, who's another co-founder of Subsquid, he also worked at the Helix Cognitive Computing GmbH. Um, so that's obviously where he got to know Dimitri. So uh, yeah, that nicely interlinks and makes a lot of sense. You do set up companies with people that you previously worked with. Um, Rotem is got a very important job. She is the ecosystem engagement lead. Web3 is all about like um, your community and how you're going to engage people to get involved in your uh, ecosystem. So super important job. She worked previously with Parity again in Web3 so, um, and has co-founded previously before. So, you know, this is all linking up and she's got like the background of Subsquid. So it's all like making sense. David, again, um, was marketing manager previously, um, marketing manager, content manager, block pass, so has been around Web3 for quite a while and now growth at Subsquid. We also have Adam, who um, is coming out of Vashava. Um, Adam is a lead network developer. He also worked with Parity Technologies, and that's maybe where he got to know Rotem, and uh, also worked with Gollum. Um, Gollum, if memory serves me correctly, ICO'd in 2015, 16, something like that, rode the bull run into 2017, and was a project coming out of Poland that like wanted to put a lot of computers together to make a supercomputer, if memory serves me correctly. This shows that like uh, Adam has been around for quite some while. And now looking at him, I think I actually met him at uh, Ethereum Vashava, um, 
yeah, a few summers ago. So Shin Dobre, Yag Shemash, Adam. Um, and also, you know, you just want to go onto the YouTube if they have one and see what they're saying. So we can see here Rotem, Adam, um, Dimitri and Marcel. So like, you know, they're all real people. They're interacting. They're not just anons. So this all um, is very good for them. And you can see how they know each other. And it looks like they have a decent idea of what they're doing in regards to creating the project, which is Sub Squid. So let's look at some key figures. If we go to GitHub here, we can see that it's got like 1.1k stars and it also has some 113 forks, which um, suggests a healthy level of engagement anyway. And um, the main language for the SDK is TypeScript, which is 98% of the code, give or take. And the SDK is available under the GPL 3.0 license, which is like a widely used um, free software license that ensures users basically have the freedom to run study share and modify the software as they see fit um as it's like there for extracting analyzing blockchain data it supports evm and substrate based chains um and i know that solana is in the roadmap coming up for quarter one this year and i hope to be integrating even more which just like obviously makes a lot of sense um the community dedicated github organization it seems to have a very structured approach anyway to github and um which is good for the overall development and community engagement and look as you can see here like with the commits and like 39 minutes ago was the most recent one like five days ago like two weeks ago it seems to be like very very active and well maintained so that can only bode well for the future and um, if we go into the socials now we can see you know they've got like 70k on discord and yeah look there's a lot happening here obviously with the with the upcoming sale, it's a it's a no brainer. Obviously, lots of things are going to be happening here. And um, then we can see on Twitter they have something like or X or whatever Elon wants to call it now, and uh, they've got like ninety two k followers. They're getting super engaged, with like three hundred k on on the coin of sale, which is to be expected. Coin of sale had to sale in a while. Um, also, they have um, yeah, they're getting really high engagement here um, on their tweets, which is cool. Like fair play, um, like yeah, like usually. 19k views and then the first comments only 500 1000 yeah like could be a little bit wishy-washy i did go into um the social play but it didn't come up for some reason and then the twitter ha or sorry the youtube has like 1700 odd subscribers which is kind of like expected for these uh type of projects and um, nobody really is subscribing on youtube unless you're like a hardcore fan and with views of like you know 100 600 views um per video so yeah overall i think the socials are quite good and the github seems to be absolutely banging so uh yeah positives there speaking of community we've also launched our Alcoin edge members club which will give you access to lots of perks going forward a private telegram group we've got the free telegram group there where we brought you things like neon like uh, sui early on many many other good projects here we're going to give you an opportunity to get into sales early on and really most importantly set you up for the upcoming bull market so if you haven't already you'll get an nft when you join as well there's a uh, free and paid versions with different tiers getting different access to different things and i'd really recommend checking it out i've left the links in the description below anyway back to the video <clears throat> Finally, let's have a look at this sub squid sale. If we scroll down here, we can see that, well, the most important thing, the vesting. So it's 20% release at TGE, which is pretty good. And then six month linear vesting, which will be about 13% per month. So, and the TGE is expected to be around May 15th, 2024. Again, this is like, you know, more or less around uh, maximum two grand, minimum 1,000. Um, fair enough there. That makes a bit of sense. Let's go to the most important thing. Okay. Pre-seed backers get 12% of the total supply. That's about fair enough. Again, how long, much do they have locked up? Six month lockup. Okay. That's fine, I suppose. Yeah, not too bad. Early backers, again, six month lockup with a 20%. Both of them have 20%, which is key. So, so we already have um, 20 percent of 
12 is 2.4 and 20% of 16 is 3.2. So 2.4 and 3.2 is 5.6. So we've got 5.6 of the total supply going out on month six. Strategic investors, um, 12 month linear investing. So they are getting access to their tokens from the beginning, um, like the like you would the sale. Strategic backers, six month lockup again. So we're going to have more tokens at, at the six month mark. Um, team, very short lockup as well. Six month lockup with 20% and they're taking 15% of the overall tokens. So yeah, that makes, well, I usually like a little bit more of a lockup, but um, yeah, that makes a bit of sense, I suppose. Um, treasury value or reserve treasury for grants and stuff. Again, that goes from month one, which is kind of fair enough. Liquidity for the sex decks. Absolutely need that from the beginning. No doubt there. Um, work rewards. No idea what that means. Never seen that before. Allocate to reward. Now, oh, node operators. Okay, fair enough. 84 month vesting, which is, I don't know, 12, 24, 36, 48, 66. 72 84 that's seven years okay but like again it's only 10 percent based over seven years so like uh minuscule amounts community sale 20 percent of tge followed by six month vesting i don't know if this is the same as i don't think it is i think that's a different sale so again these people are like the community are getting a chance to make a bit of money there and test net participants one percent and then test net workers one percent look you can see here oh god it annoys me so much like what is this like you know blah, 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 blah. like basically what we're seeing here is six months this is where all of the tokens dumped essentially so a lot of tokens will be released at that month so if you were looking at it you'll say if there's not that much um, demand for the tokens then i say there'll be a supply shock because we've calculated that like quite a bit of the tokens are coming out at a six month and there uh, we can see that here to be a massive increase in supply so you know um um i haven't calculated what is the circulating supply at tge which i'll go and try and do now okay so here is my understanding of the subsquid token distribution of token generation event the pre-seed backers well they've got a six month lockup the seed backers again have a six month lockup the strategic backers um the first one here you can see 4.6 percent of the total tokens and released at tg is 0.383 percent the strategic backers too have a six month lockup so they're not here the team have um, a six month lockup so they're not here the reserve treasury is 28.1 percent again 36 month linear vesting this is usually held back i'm not really put onto the market i wouldn't think so that's anyway 0.781 percent release to tge and um, liquid treasury again is available immediately um so that's five percent but this could be going to sexes uh, dexes and stuff like that like so that's important and like not really uh, vital in the tokens coming onto the market per se worker rewards is absolutely minuscule and has an 84 month vesting so that's 1.19 um, percent and um, that shouldn't be not specified because it's 10 percent of total tokens so let me just change that there apologies um and then community sale um which is as far as i'm aware um the coin list so that's five percent so that's one percent of the total tokens um release of tg testnet participants again one percent of the total tokens which is like minuscule so that's 0.167 and then like um the test network has a 12 month lockup so if we add all this up together we get a grand total of about 7.45 percent of the tokens being available at tge but when you take out that liquidity treasury it's probably quite a lot less so no doubt just because of the tokenomics i would think that we're probably going to have a good old um you know a bit of demand for this token and i think you know that could definitely lead to some positive price action at tge this is of course if coinless release your tokens on time which is something you always have to take into account when dealing with the platform interestingly let's go to look at six months so you can see here the amount of tokens that are going to be circulating at the six month mark the pre-seed backers will have 2.6 2.4% or 12% uh, circulating the seed backers 3.26 team 3 strategic 2.3 so on and so forth and that gets us to a magical number that 27% represents 
the amount of tokens released at, at, at circulating at six months, okay? And that is a huge difference between the 7% at TGE. Pre-seed backers, what did they buy the tokens at? It certainly wasn't the 9 cent that you're paying them at. Seed backers, again, will be cheaper. Team have obviously got the tokens for free because they've created them. And so I think there'll be a lot of sell pressure here at the six month mark. This is what they're trying to confuse and obfuscate with this graph. Like one month, one month 85, like very very vague very very basic here and this is basically what the breakdown of this is right and that's the key point here this point here and this point here are the two key points after that it doesn't really matter as much so if you like this type of research i really recommend checking out our members club and come down to telegram to say hello where we bring some great great things for you guys and uh, my name is axis me not going edge i'm out bye bye